We're back. This is Dave Vellante of Wikibon.org, and this is Silicon Angles, The Cube. The Cube is a live mobile studio. We go to events, we extract the signal from the noise, we bring you the guests that are at the show <laughs> that really help you understand the trends that are happening in the marketplace and give you a flavor for the event itself. We're here live at HP Barcelona uh, at Discover, and uh, it's been a great event, three days wall-to-wall uh, -wall coverage. We're here for the bulk of, of today as well. We've been covering the gamut of, of infrastructure, of software, really, uh, services, uh, HP's overall strategy. We're going to dig in a little bit to, to server and connectivity and some of the storage and, and, and networking trends that are affecting servers. Today's a big day for servers. We've got Antonio Neri coming on, um, who's now running the HP server business. Jim Gantier is going to be here. Uh, but right now, uh, Jerome Rubalon is here. He is with the HP Server Division in EMEA, and Greg Shearer, who is with Broadcom, he's the Vice President of Server and Storage Strategy at Broadcom, and a longtime CUBE guest. Gentlemen, welcome to theCUBE. Yeah, thank you. Thank Good you. Good to see you guys. So Jerome, let's start with you. Uh, what's happening, give us a flavor of what's happening in the, the European and EMEA region with uh, HP servers. Just give us the quick update. Right, so we recently done a you know, major refresh of our product line, um, you know, adopting the latest you know, Avery Bridge processor from, from Intel, and we've also made you know, big announcements across the board, especially on the, on the networking and IO side, uh, leveraging you know, some of the unique you know, Broadcom capabilities. So basically now Broadcom becomes you know, the standard you know, adaptive chipset technology that we have across the board. On with, with, you know, any of our, of our platforms, you know, from one gig, ten gig, ten gig base T, are now becoming you know standards for build to order, configure to order platforms. Well, that's good news. Yep. <laughs> yep. I like uh, that, right? It is. It certainly HP, is for us. <laughs> Hundred plus billion dollar company, and we do, do a lot of volume there. So you got to like that. Uh, so, Greg, Ivy Bridge. Um, mm -hmm. wh what does that mean to to the industry? Uh, you know, from a from a strategy, from a trend standpoint, why is that important? Well, you know, I Ivy Bridge is, is really just the, the next sequential launch from an Intel perspective, but it does provide <clears throat> a tremendous amount more compute capability. So we look at the, at the trend in terms of virtual servers. It, it really enables virtual servers for a whole nother avenue. You know, you, you have a lot more cores. Uh, the, the speed of the overall system is a, is a lot uh, greater. But in addition to that, you know, something that HP has done which is, which is really helpful for the industry is their FlexLOM capability, this whole FLR and FLB capability of being able to, to really get the same use out of, instead of having a soldered down part, um, you can have an add-in card but still manage it just like it was soldered down. So all the sideband, out-of-band management capabilities, being able to do things like you know, from your console or from you know, a, a network administration standpoint, be able to uh, look at fan speed, power, but do things like program sand boot, uh, so for diskless operations and things. Those are all the things that you got when you had a soldered down LOM. The flex LOM capability, or the FLR and FLB capability for rack versus uh, the blade environment, um, all that capability really plays in so nicely now into the, the Ivy Bridge launch you have these incredibly powerful servers, and now you have the ability to have any combination of I.O. that you want. You know, one gig, multiple ports of one gig, 10 gig. Um, we've, we're, we're really excited because within this launch, we now support all the flex fabric capabilities, so FCOE, iSCSI, as well as all the rich uh, networking capabilities. What that means is, is that somebody can start with, say, a four port one gig, and move up seamlessly to 10 gig, not lose any of their management capabilities just by unplugging these flex LOM boards, plug in a new one, right. and they, they have their choice of 10G base T if they're a rack kind of environment, or SFP plus if they you know, are already a, a short reach copper or want to use optical connections. So you know, very important that people don't lose capability when they want to swap out something you know, to a, a new speed grade. 
So I'm curious as to how you guys work together, um, because obviously, Greg, you guys are you know the component supplier. Mm -hmm. Jerome, HP, of course, talks to channel partners, and of course, directly right. talks to customers. How do requirements for what J Greg just described come from the field, you know, back to to Broadcom, and then back through you know the HP channel? Because, Greg, what you just described, a customer's not going to tell you or ask you to do what you just described. A customer's going to have a different set of requirements and, and use a different language. So what is that language that the customer uses, Jerome, and how does that translate back into what Broadcom development develops? Right. Can you describe that so information I mean, flow? It's been Broadcom a very you know, um, long time partners. We've been working together you know, for you know, quite a bit of time. Um, it's not only working from you know, a, a product qualification standpoint, but it's through the entire life cycle of of the products, so it's from you know you know engineering up to you know supply, you know production and and, and deployment. So really tr really trying to to really work tightly together to deliver you know higher quality products with the highest level of integration, while at the same time providing what Greg described, which means a lot of flexibility and choice for our customers, not looking locking them down into any specific architecture. So we do leverage you know Broadcom specific unique features like storage offload, like the CNAs, like 10 gig base T. And, and we add also the HP innovation on top so that we can drive you know, greater benefits to, you know, to our customers. Um, again, everything is based on industry standards, so that, that's also extremely important for, you know, for HP, never looking at a customer in anything. And, and also, we, we do, um, what we're doing with the Flex Slum is really bringing a lot of intelligence closer to where the applications run, which are the servers, making sure the service becomes more self-sufficient, and that's definitely you know, something that we, we are doing together. So the customer might say, hey, I don't want to get locked into a specific server box be right. just because of the connectivity on that box. Right. I want to have more exactly. flexibility. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Some, some of and our competitors will push customers, for instance, to, to, to adopt you know, fiber channel or Ethernet, but not every customer is already for that, right? So we need to give them the flexibility you know, uh, that, that they need to adopt you know, the IO technology that they can, and that's definitely something that we can deliver with Broadcom. So, so in, in thinking about the, this <coughs> latest development, um, how, how long did it take? What was the development cycle like? <laughs> um, I mean, you know, it's, it's, it's interesting because you know, everybody says we're, we're, we're customer focused, but in your world, Greg, a lot of times you have to sort of decode what the customer wants and put technology out there and you know, hope you got it right. <laughs> so, we, we do, but you know, one of the things that, that's so great, that, you know, I'll, 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 I'll turn the clock backwards because once upon a time, Broadcom's focus was really working with the internal development teams exclusively you know, at, at HP, which has been a terrific relationship, but we'd find out from time to time we'd miss things. Because frankly, Jerome and, and his team, you know, they're touching the customers. They're, they're getting direct feedback from the customers. And you know, it's, it's sort of like you know, that, that old game you know, telephone, you know, where when you pass through three or four different folks, you right. end up- Something gets right. lost. Right, yeah, something gets lost. Right. So even, know, if, even in our world, even when you direct connect, things get oh, lost. Right. You interpret things differently, <laughs> Absolutely. right? Absolutely. It right. takes years of experience in trying to uh, understand that. So. so here, one of the great parts is, is we not only have the deep relationship with ISS you know, in the US with the development teams and the engineering teams to, to look at all their specifications and requirements, but you know, we've been really fortunate that we have a great working relationship with Jer Jerome and his team, because even some of the EMEA needs are a little bit different than the, yeah. than the North American needs. And to be able to collect those up directly, you know, we, we actually are engaged now in all the EMEA events. Um, Jerome and his team have terrific, uh, you know, uh, coverage across, uh, you know, EMEA. The ETSS events that, right. that occur, we've started participating in those and not only, you know, touching directly the, the uh, uh, you know, the, the, the sales folks and the sales architects, but also the end users right. directly and resellers and VARs. And so, uh, matter of fact, the, the ETSS events, there'll be two of them this year, and they're both here in Barcelona. I don't know if they're here in this facility, but they are. What are those, the are. D -D -T e ETSS is the Expert One Technology Solution Summit. So it's, it's like our largest you know, conference for you know, pre-sales organization, both internally to HP, but also our channel resellers. So it's, you know, Thousands of people are coming just to be, you know, trained and get up to speed about the latest technologies, and and Broadcom is, you know, one of our major sponsors. Sure, Greg was mentioning that the the 
requirements in Europe are somewhat different than the U.S. Now, I don't know if you can comment on, on the differences because you know, maybe right. you're not in the U.S., but maybe you could sort of summarize <laughs> those requirements and maybe, Greg, you can help us sort of squint through what's different between North America and, and Europe in terms of those needs. Well, um, I think they are, they are key, key major trends that we see across the board, right? Um, but I would say in Europe, we are very fragmented type of markets. So, you know, different countries will have different type of requirements. Um, uh, you know, if you take countries like Spain, will be very, um, you know, small and medium businesses orientated, you know, far less corporations. So they, they really requires a lot of simplification, m you know, much more than, you know, larger, larger corporations. Um, and that will change, you know, again, from a country to another. So again, very country specific requirements from, you know, specific customers, all of them impacted by the big trends that we see like cloud, mobility, security, big data, you know, that, that's something that we, we also th see, you know, across the board, across the region. I think then it's more cultural, you know, business type of structure that is, will be different from a country to another. But, but Dave, something that we've, we've learned, and, <clears throat> and this has been, I think, a very valuable thing that, that we bring to the market together, there, there are several technologies, you know, we, we talked about uh, Flex Fabric, uh, Flex 10, this is the, a technology that they're really HP invented right. in terms of partitioning, uh, you know, a, a fat pipe into multiple smaller, you know, pipes that, that can have quality of service associated with them for either layer two networking traffic or storage uh, oriented traffic. And that's a pipe utilization efficiency play. Right, right it there. really is, and in, in mapping back into the hypervisors and native OS's in a way that they can understand it. Uh, in, in this case, it just looks like uh, PCIe physical functions right. that map back in, and the OS is really unaware uh, that, that this partitioning is even happening, mm -hmm. that, that these different virtual devices happen to be sharing a, a, the same physical pipe. Uh, but, but something that, that's pretty unique, that there, there are other vendors out there in, in the world that have this kind of technology, but there's only one, and that, you know, HP really stepped forward and said, you know what, this is great technology, but we want to standardize this. We want to make sure that this is available through, you know, industry standard uh, mechanisms. Uh, so together, we've taken this into IEEE. So there's a, a, a working group in IEEE to take this kind of partitioning capability and, and allow it to be used across the board. And I think that's sort of testament to, to HP's courage of- When you say across the board, you mean by competitors? Absolutely. Right. And it, it's, it really is a testimony towards, you know, you, you measure something, you know, you put your money where your mouth is. Um, HP's technology is very good. HP has this view of, of staying ahead and, but then in addition to you know, staying ahead of the market, it's giving away the technology so that there isn't the vendor lock-in. Because I think there is a tendency with some of the other big, say, switch vendors that have proprietary environments that there is a lock-in. If you buy into their servers and their switch environments, you can't go anywhere. And I think HP's commitment is, is to stay ahead of the market but make sure to turn that, that capability over to the standards bodies and so we have a whole nother section of our, of our groups that work together in say the IEEE environments that work in an open industry standard mechanism to go ahead and enable that technology across the board to other competitors. What do you, how does that resonate with customers, Jerome? What do you hear from customers when you talk about that sort of openness? HP emphasizes that a lot. What's the customer feedback to that? I mean, I think you know, c customers are extremely cautious on, on not being locked in, in in any type of infrastructure, right? Could be you know storage network or or servers. They're looking for you know tight integration, which is extremely important for them. Um, and you know, integrated systems, as as an example, is something that is you know currently booming also in, in Europe. So more and more customers want to see those type of appliance, but it's important that they're not locked in any type of environments. So, as Greg mentioned, we do leverage industry standards. But what we also want to, to, to deliver is um, you know, kill those silos that you have in today's data centers, driving more simplifications, making sure that different IT organizations can work together, so networking, storage, you know, and, and servers. So there is a big focus within our you know, convergence for social strategy to deliver greater simplification. So if you think like you know, software-defined network on the networking side, you know, direct connect to 3PAR on, on, on the storage, um, you know, blitz system optimization that, you know, that, that we have in terms of, ma you know, managing the infrastructure. So we, we're putting a lot of efforts in, you know, streamlining operations, streamlining the hardware architecture that is required, and all of that is always based on industry standards. Okay, so we want to make sure that customers retain their power to choose, you know, what is the roadmap, okay? So it's hard, right, because 
all things being equal, of course, people don't want to get locked in. They'd prefer open, but sometimes committees slow you down. So <laughs> how is it that you've been able to be successful at providing functionality? Because most customers would say, look, if I can't get the function, I'm willing to risk the lock-in. Right. So that's a challenge for you. If, if you want to go open, you want to take it to committees, um, open source obviously has this, we're not talking about open source, but there's a similar analog here. How is it that you've been able to su su successfully drive functional best of breed and still maintain that openness? That's a tough balance, isn't it? Right. Um, I mean, if you look at, for instance, you know, software defined network, which is the thing that everybody speaks about today, we're not new in that market, okay? We, we have been working on SDN for, you know, since 2007. We, we went through you know, multiple steps, multiple innovations, multiple proof points on, on that technology. Right now, we, we have a complete SDN ecosystem. We have the, uh, the largest open flow you know, switching portfolio. We have um, you know, SDN controller. We propose um, SDN you know, uh, developer kits you know, to develop your applications, again, you know, software defined network. Uh, we have an SDN app store. Yeah, so step by step, we've built a complete, you know, complete ecosystem. And these, our solutions can manage you know, um, a standard legacy environment as well as an SDN environment at the same time. So we, it's an easy pass for the customers to go, to go in, that, in that direction. So that's a, a typical example on how, how we could drive you know, industry standards, innovations on top, not looking in customers into it, and, and you know, making sure that customers can smoothly transition to, into those next generation technologies. So we're here in the uh, exhibit hall, I think it's hall five, enormous setup uh, in, in Barcelona. <laughs> uh, kind of reminds me of the, the CBIT uh, in a way, without the, without the zoo, but in terms of this physical space. And we're here at the, the sort of converged infrastructure and the storage pavilion, and I see all these three-par yellow boxes around. It's, it's interesting. Um, you know, most HP branding isn't yellow, but these stand out in the data center, <laughs> so I guess they let it go. But so, you guys have been announcing converged storage. Um, you know, 3PAR is doing really well on the market. W what is there anything unique about 3PAR that you guys can talk about that, that you're seeing in the marketplace, or Greg, that, that Broadcom is participating in and taking advantage of? Yeah, well, I, I'll give my, my observations, then I'd love to, to turn it over to Jerome, but I think one of the things that's so important about this is that if you look at most uh, storage arrays, most storage companies, they're fairly low volume companies. Uh, so they, they turn over their server SKUs uh, very infrequently because they, they just don't have a huge amount of volume. I just look at it sort of from the outside and think, wow, this is a, a wonderful marriage because uh, essentially all the, the yellow tags that you see, those are all running on ProLiant based servers. And so they're, they're really leveraging high volume, you know, Intel, you know, state of the art servers. So Gen 8, you know, moving to, to Gen 9, you know, next year and beyond and, and you know looking at that and you think many of the other storage companies can't match that because they just don't have the, the volume to leverage. So uh, I think that's a, a really big issue there. You know of course in this in this uh, Gen 8 launch we now support Broadcom uh, supports Flex Fabric, so FCOE capability. And uh, 3PAR has some some really really very nice uh, capabilities in that uh, three par can support a direct connect as opposed to having to have a whole fiber channel services layer provided by one of the incumbent you know native fiber channel uh, switch vendors that can tend to be pretty heavy for you know a small to medium business or a small sand installation where you don't already have that in place and I think that's right. a huge benefit yeah we, we call it the flat sand <coughs> capabilities where in fact you can connect you know your your blade environment leveraging of its connect technology directly into your three par. And obviously we can now leverage you know, Broadcom capabilities on, on the server side and it's an end-to-end -end solution where you connect the servers sort of almost directly to that 3 power array. You basically reduce significantly the cost because you don't need fiber channel infrastructure in between, reduce latency and speed up you know, storage deployment. It's a lot less complex. Right. You don't have a big sand yeah. switch infrastructure. Right. All right, gentlemen, we, we're out of time, but uh, thanks very much for coming in and sharing some of the server and storage and networking trends, the, the specifics that are going on in Europe and in EMEA. Really appreciate your time. Yep, thank you. I right, keep you. it right there, everybody. We're back with our next guest, myself and John Furrier. We're live. This is theCUBE from HP Discover Barcelona. We'll be right back. <laughs>